The 2017-2018 Volvo Ocean Race continues to provide some of the closest down to the wire one design ocean racing to date. With three out of 11 legs completed, a clear split is developed between the podium and the trailing pack. The Spanish team Mafre showing early dominance on 29 points after taking back-to-back -back wins in legs two and three. Rivals Dongfang Race Team are tied for second place with Vestas 11th Hour Racing, both on 23 points. Tricky trade winds, subtropical cyclone storms, and another doldrums crossing are just a few of the challenges that lay ahead for the crews as they set out on leg four, 6,000 miles from Melbourne to Hong Kong. Leg three was freezing cold and this one's going to be boiling hot. I mean, the temperature inside the boat can get up to 50 degrees. And when you're lying there trying to sleep after spending seven hours on deck, you're going to be, it's going to be just as hard as trying to get to, get to sleep in the cold. For Charles Coudrelier and the Dongfeng race team, the pressure is on to unravel the speed and tactical edge that Mafre has established after the opening legs. Losing their navigator, Pascal Badigari, due to an injury in leg three, provided a setback. But stepping in to take his place is French sailing legend Frank Camas, winner of the 2011-2012 Volvo Ocean Race aboard Groupama. I'm very happy to, to come back uh, on the Volvo Ocean Race. With Charles was actually uh, the last uh, Volvo campaign <laughs> with Groupama. I am very confident with him and uh, he's very confident with me also, so we can communicate very well together. And uh, this is important in this kind of race. Six out of the seven teams made major crew changes ahead of leg four, replenishing the ranks by bringing in fresh substitutes after a grueling Southern Ocean leg. Surprisingly, overall leaders Mafre have made no changes to their team, sticking with the lineup that brought them victory in leg three. Well, I think so. I think it's, uh, as we all say, is uh, preparation is very important, and uh, and well, like, you need to be a little bit lucky as well. I think uh, it's a combination, but uh, the whole crew is in good shape, and and we are lucky and happy of not changing anyone here. We've been lucky enough of having a, a good week rest here in in Melbourne. No one's injured, and of you. The week-long Melbourne stopover provided a much-needed respite for the crews and time for repairs for all the teams, in particular Team Axo Nobel, who arrived two days after the Leg 3 leaders due to damaging their mass track in the Southern Ocean. So the plan tonight, obviously, is to get the rig totally stripped down and rotated so the mass track is facing upwards. Yeah. And I'd say the, um, we'll just get through the, yeah, the list of checks that need to be done and get this work done. I think that the rig should be as good as, as good as it needs to be. Melbourne City provided the backdrop as the seven teams lined up for the start of leg four, surrounded by spectators keen to bid the fleet farewell. Within hours, the crews faced their first challenge, navigating the notorious exit from Port Phillip Bay into Bass Strait. Vestas 11th Hour Racing led the charge through Melbourne Heads and into rugged conditions before heading out into the Bass Strait. From there, it's north to the Solomon Islands with the fleet expected to finish in Hong Kong in 20 days time.